The moon is one of the most iconic and recognizable celestial objects in the universe. It's been the target of cultures and rituals, rockets and probes, and in the future, maybe even colonists and companies. Hearing its name sounds familiar, unlike some other objects. It's the second brightest object in the sky from Earth and always appears to change in shape. Although the moon is a sphere, sometimes we see it as a crescent, half, nothing at all, or anything in between. Hello, I'm your host Trishy, and in this episode of the Space Age, I'll be explaining why the moon appears to change in shape. One of the key concepts to understanding the change in the moon's shape is perception. Look at this image. Do you recognize it? You might think that it's of the moon, but something's not quite right, is it? I can assure you that this is the moon, but if you look at the moon from Earth, you'll see something like this. The image I showed earlier doesn't appear to be present anywhere on the moon. But remember that the moon is a three-dimensional object. The reason why this image might look unfamiliar even to the most enthusiastic of sky watchers and stargazers is because we never actually see this side of the moon. The moon is tidally locked with the earth, meaning one side permanently faces the earth and the other never faces the earth. Both sides are present at any given time. The reason why we can't see the far side is perception. Keep this in mind when I discuss the phases of the moon, which is what we call the moon's change in shape. The moon is a sphere in our solar system with the sun being the primary light source. This means that ignoring all shadows and reflections, half of the moon will be illuminated and the other half won't but both halves will exist at all times. If we zoom in, we can see that there is a line dividing the two sides. We call this the Lunar Terminator, and it doesn't care about the orientation of the moon. Blue will represent the bright side, and red will represent the dark side. Some observant viewers may have realized that we just created a half moon simply by changing the camera angle. So, how is this related to the change in the moon shape? Remember how earlier I said we can't see all the moon at once? And how I also said that half of the moon will be illuminated and the other half won't? Well, the phases of the moon just come from how much of the half we can see overlaps with the half that's illuminated. Knowing this, let's go step by step and make a complete model for the phases of the moon. To help visualize this, let's get a satellite that will image the moon as it orbits around the Earth. This hypothetical satellite will orbit right outside of Earth's atmosphere as to not get distracted by the day-night cycle changing the background of the image. The satellite will orbit at the same pace as the moon so we can accurately track it and not get pulled out of view by the Earth's much faster orbit. And before you say, but how is it possible to orbit at the same pace but closer in, I would just like to say that this is my hypothetical satellite, and if I say it's orbiting at the same pace but closer in, then it's orbiting at the same pace but closer in. Alright, let's move on from hypothetical satellites with inaccurate physics and get into the first phase of the moon, the new moon. Notice how the dark side of the moon is facing us? Well, in this phase of the moon, it's really hard to see anything, and that's the reason why. To make this worse, the moon rises and sets at nearly the exact same time as the sun, because they almost form a line with the earth. This is bad, because the moon will nearly every time get outshined by the sun. Let's take a look at what happens 
as the moon starts to orbit in its counterclockwise motion. As we can see, the side of the moon lit by the sun is now starting to get revealed. Does this look familiar? Because this is one of the two stages that the iconic crescent moon is present. Anyone notice what I did there with the rhyming of crescent and, and present? Well anyways, this phase of the moon is called the waxing crescent. Waxing because it's growing, and it rises and sets slightly after the sun. If you can get the moon after sunset, but before moonset, then you should be able to see a nice clear crescent moon. Alright, so let's move on to the next phase of the moon, the first quarter. In this phase, the moon is confusingly half illuminated. The reason why we call it the first quarter is because the moon is a quarter of the way done with its cycle. The moon during this phase will rise during the noon and set at midnight. It might also be worthwhile to note that sometimes, because the Earth's surface can reflect light from the sun and onto the moon, you might get this faint glow on the dark side of the moon that's called Earth's shine. After that key milestone, then more than half of the moon becomes visible. And now we get to an interesting shape, not quite a full moon, but close to it. It's called a gibbous, or a hunchback shape. And because this moon is growing, we call it a waxing gibbous. It'll rise a bit after noon, and will set a bit after midnight. After the waxing gibbous, we finally go to the classic phase, the full moon. The face that we see, and the phase that's lit, become 100% overlapped. During the full and new moon, the lunar terminator is perpendicular to our viewing angle and appears as the circumference of the moon. The full moon rises during sunset and sets during sunrise, meaning it's never visible during the day. We are now halfway done with the lunar cycle. Now the moon will go through all of its phases, but in reverse. It'll first start to disappear to a waning gibbous. Waning means shrinking, by the way. Then, it'll continue into the third quarter, because the moon is three quarters done with its cycle. After that, we have the second crescent, the waning crescent, and finally, we arrive back to the familiar new moon. Now, we have the complete diagram of the moon's phases, and we can make some observations. If you notice, the waning phases appear to be mirror images of their respective waxing phases. This is because the lunar terminator stays the same. It's just that the light half and the dark half switch places. The new first quarter full and third quarter moons are milestones, and the moon must be exactly the illumination presented shown in order to be officially called these. However, the crescent and gibbous phases refer to anything in between their respective milestones. And with that, we are done with the model of the phases of the moon. Well, almost done, but this video is already super long so stay tuned for part 2 where I talk about all the rare and breathtaking lunar events, as well as the science behind them. Thanks for watching everyone, make sure to like, sub, and maybe even check out some of my other videos. See ya! By the way, now since I told you this, your brain will automatically see a close-up shot of the moon as a shaded sphere, potentially ruining your appreciation 
for a crescent moon. And I guess gibbuses as well, but no one really cares about them.